She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We really are so very blessed that you decided to join us today. I think today has the opportunity to kind of open your eyes a little bit, maybe even challenge you, which I think is so important. In the grand scheme of success, you've got to include your family. You have to include your children. The bottom line is this. We have so many people in our day and age that are chasing after what the media has sold us to be what success is. That's how it was for me in the very beginning of my career in business. You see, I thought success only had to do with business. Then I found that in my own struggles in my own life, that when I sacrificed my family, my husband, I sacrificed my marriage, I sacrificed my kids, all chasing money, chasing business, chasing success and recognition and all of this stuff only to end up with a heart attack at 24 and a nervous breakdown at 25. I then began to widen my scope about what success really was about. Did I want a pathetic, like desolate, horrific, and regretful family life and have tons of money? Well, I have to tell you, I had a millionaire who actually had told me that that if in the very beginning, when I was young and stupid and would listen to anybody, told me that if I sacrifice everything for seven years, I could pick my head up after seven years and everything would be okay. Unfortunately, so many people are following that same kind of idea that really does not result in everything being okay. In fact, I remember him saying, whatever problems it is that you have, you could just write a check for it because you'll have so much money. Well, I couldn't write a check to buy back the time that I lost with my kids and also the destruction that was put on my marriage. No check, no money could fix any of those things. And sadly, so many parents around the globe are doing the same thing. Even if they're not chasing millions, even if they're just trying to crack the nut, make ends meet. Well, what ends are we talking about? They want another pair of shoes and another pair of pants. All the while, they're shoving a cell phone into their kids' hands to babysit their children with whatever, videos or whatever it is that their kids are finding online on that cell phone, three-year-olds with a cell phone in their hand, mom, dad's cell phone in their hand, while mom and dad are trying to do some other things, like working some online business or trying to build a business from home or trying to make some contacts and prospecting and things of that nature. And so all over the place, we have kids who've been exposed to things like pornography and sex trafficking. And the parents are not even thinking to have the conversation with their kids about those particular topics. Listen, if you actually think that protecting your kids means that you do not have conversations with them about sex trafficking and you don't have conversations with them about pornography, if you think that is protecting your kid, you're not protecting your kid. You're actually setting your kid up to be the next victim of both of those incredibly targeted, incredibly powerful, and incredibly hurtful industries. Sex trafficking, multi-billion dollar industry. And those who are trafficking the kids, they're very, very, very good at capturing your child. Your child that you've never had the conversation with about because you have this kind of lame brain idea that if they don't know about it, that is protecting them. That's not protecting them. That's hurting them. Keeping them naive to the reality of what's happening in our world today with pornography, which by the way, is the gateway straight into child sex trafficking. So are you having those conversations with your kids? If you are going to use the cell phone to babysit your children, whether it's your cell phone you handed to them or you gave your third grader a cell phone. If you're not having consistent conversations about what is on that phone and what kind of information is available to them that could be harmful, that could be hurtful, even addictive like pornography. Listen, our family, yes, even though we had protected measures on our computers, which by the way, that was way before any children ever got a cell phone, right? Just on the computers alone, had every safety measure that it was, they still found that pornography or pornography found them. Do you know that the leaders of the pornography industry, they gather around together in boardrooms many years ago and figured out a way to expound their market. You see, initially they only had a small market of the men. They wanted to figure out how can we enlarge our market? In fact, how can we guarantee sales moving forward? How can we have exponential growth in our industry? Well, then they started to target the women. 
After they targeted the women, of course, they were able to grow their market significantly. And now we have women that are addicted to pornography instead of having sex with their husbands. Yeah, they're fantasizing alone in a closet with some batteries and, well, sadly, not entering into an intimate relationship with their spouse. We also then have the same porn industry that wanted to figure out how <laughs> to expand their market, but more importantly, generationally. How do we create momentum and be able to have sustained, sustained sales moving forward, a guarantee almost of great sales moving forward? They began to target your children. Yeah, your children and my children is who they began to target. Very, very strategically, yes, camping out on homeschooling sites and writing different ways, like wrong ways of spelling that homeschooling site, waiting for the domain name of the homeschooling site to expire and then bam, they pounced right on it and bought that domain name. Listen, friend, that's just one, one little strategy that they used. There are hundreds of them. They are marketers, they are skillful. Now the traffickers, those who are abducting children and selling them off into the traffic industry, this is a real thing, friend. It's a real thing. And they, again, target homeschooling sites. They target all of these different things their kids are interested in, even things on YouTube, all the channels that have predominantly just um, cartoons or they have, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the channels that have nothing but child programming on it, meaning, you know, educational stuff or, you know, kids playing. I mean, there's video gaming, you name it. These particular traffickers specifically target any sites or channels that have to do with kids. Social media being another one. Again, YouTube being another one. All the places that you think are safe. Oh, and by the way, especially those Christian sites. Oh, yes, especially those. In fact, the pornographers also target the Christian sites. Why? Because it's largely known that Christians are not as hmm, wise with their children as, say, the non-Christians are. It's like the trippiest thing. Sadly, often, the Christian just kind of puts it on the church to raise their kids, puts it on the church. You know, if I bring my kids to church, then they're going to be okay. If I bring my kids to youth group, then it's going to be okay. If my kids go to VBS during the summer, then they're going to be okay. If I may, if I limit the music to Christian music that my kids listen to, then they're going to be okay. You see, it's largely known that even Christian parents do not have those important conversations with their kids, open conversations. But instead, they're just kind of, I don't know, codependent with a building, hoping the building is going to program their kids for them. So we're going to talk about today the importance of you not shifting your responsibility of having sex conversations. Yes, conversations about sex, conversations about porn, conversations about sex trafficking and how that entire world exists and what it does and how it targets without imparting fear into your children, but instead imparting wisdom into your children. This is a real issue today, friends. And if you're going to be the person that puts a cell phone in your child's hands, guess what, friend? And not to mention, you can't control this. You have your, your kids' friends who their parents have put a cell phone in their hands with no responsibility, with no protective measures, and no conversation. So it's really simple for one of those people who is targeting your child and my grandchildren for trafficking through pornography first, leading them down a path, through social media, by the way, as well, through community type sites, through gaming sites, the list goes on of all the different ways. I mean, come on, you just have to think about it for a minute. All the different places, wherever children are, hello, <laughs> they're targeting your baby. They're targeting it. So what should you do? We asked this question on Facebook, and we also found some statistics that I think might kind of seal the deal for you. According to growingwireless.com, 56% of children age eight to 12 have a cell phone. That's like half the population. Okay, maybe your kid doesn't. And maybe you have had these conversations with your kid, but guess what? If, it, if half of their friends from eight to 12 have a cell phone. And if mom and dad are as busy as most mom and dads are, they're not checking that cell phone. They're not checking the history. They're not paying attention. They're not doing the random checks. There's not having any parameters on it. Okay, the average exposure age to pornography is 11 years old. Hmm, interesting, right? Kid gets a cell phone from eight to 12. The average pornography age, a uh, kid that's being exposed to it is 11 years old. But it's falling as more and more young kids have access to cell phones and tablets. They can access this through tablets as well. 
That's according to Global News. Most parents think that the right time to start talking about kids about sex or sexual objects is 11 years old or older. I did not wait till my kids were 11 to start planting seeds about them being protected and to watch out for, hello, these types of things like the damage that that happens from these particular injuries the kind of people that get hurt listen i was molested i told my kids about me being molested in fact i had that first conversation with erica when she was four years old yes on how to protect herself and how to honor her body and how to honor the space of other men and that how men can be stimulated in a way that's not their heart to be stimulated in that way but they can be stimulated physically get the wrong idea and then we can be in a very horrible and hurtful situation. And so about keeping her body protected, protecting other men, protecting their honor, protecting their bodies by her not jumping on their lap and sitting and bouncing up and down on their lap, which obviously, unfortunately, can help to stimulate the man, which is a terrible thing. Whether it was her father or an uncle or a family friend or a cousin, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, how many men that are inside of all of our children's lives? And the fact is, is not a single one of them wants to harm the child, but at the same time, if the child is super flirtatious, if the child is, um, you know, sitting in places maybe that they shouldn't be sitting in, and if they're sitting in a way that they shouldn't be sitting, This is why it's so important, again, to have the conversation with both your girls and boys. All right, so we had some uh, statements on this and we had some responses on Facebook. And by the way, if you haven't joined us on Facebook, you need to. You need to come over to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find us at Danny Johnson Live. That's D-A-N-I Johnson Live to enter in on the conversation. And wherever it is that you're watching today, please communicate with me because we love, love reading your comments and and hearing your perspective. So I wanna know from you and please just type type it below. Have you had the conversation with your kids? Are you in that place going stumped? Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I don't know what to do. You can't stay there. But I want you to write to me right this minute. And if you have had the conversation, listen, I'm not the only person that should be giving the ideas. Our community, we're a community of people who gathers together in all these social media platforms and YouTube, by the way, Danny Johnson Live on YouTube. So please, like, start writing to us. Have you had the conversation? What did you say? How did you approach it? How did you protect your children? What are some other resources and tools that you found that were helpful for you to have these kind of conversations? I want to read you this one. I love this. Um, He says, Gino Fowler uh, wrote this to us, and he says, Danny Johnson, when we personally first purchased our first home computer in 1998. Doesn't that seem like 20 million years ago? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so crazy. Is when we talked about pornography, trafficking, and the threats that potentially await young and old minds. We even pointed out advertising that was exploitive in nature. How to treat a young lady was my talk primarily to him. However, my wife and I discussed what I had shared with him as well. So look at this. This is a husband and a wife coming together to have a conversation with their son. And look, they didn't just talk about, you know, the pornography maybe that might be on the internet, but at the grocery store, right? The grocery stores, the the, the checkout line is lined with ex- extremely exploitive content, right? Whether it's headlines when that little kid can learn how to read and there they are practicing, right? When you've got a second grader that's learning to read, they want to practice on everything that they see. And so they're standing there with you with your cart full. You're just adding the, the groceries on the conveyor belt, talking to the, to the person that's checking your groceries and your kid is you know, mouthing, what they're sounding out the words, and uh, hello, have you ever read the headlines on the magazines? They're very, very sexual, very sexual. Not to mention the clothing or the lack thereof. And so I think it's incredibly smart with this father and his wife had done with their children. So even just that, look for the opportunities all around to show, to teach, to not curse, by the way, because listen, we've, we've, uh, we do this marriage conference once a year called Hot Marriage Secrets. And what we have found when I ask the question, and we're talking 500 people, 400 people, okay, that's 200 couples. And when I ask the question, how many of your parents did not talk to you about sex, almost every hand in the room goes up. And then when we look at our culture where we, the only time sex is talked about is in a cursed way, pornography, a cursed 
thing, right? Sex out of marriage. Don't have sex out of marriage. Okay, that's a bad, it's a cursed thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so sex has all been put down on. It's been pushed in this corner as a nasty, dirty thing. And so make sure when you are having this conversation about pornography and the sex traffickers, that again, even that, sex trafficking, what's that? It's a cursed thing. It's a terrible thing. So just make sure that you're having the balance of the conversation with your children. So you're not only pay, painting the picture that sex is bad, Bad and that it's wrong. No, sex is blessed between a husband and a wife. It is something that God created. And this is the conversation to have. This is the conversation we had with our kids. It is blessed. God made it for the moms and dads. He made it for the enjoyment and the pleasure and the intimacy of each other and, and, and the beautiful um, way of expressing themselves and, and being really vulnerable with each other. And it's part of how we come together as one flesh. And so have that conversation with them. And and yet what's happened is, is that other people have taken something that is so blessed, that is so beautiful that you, child, one day will experience once you're married and you'll experience something that is perfectly holy because it's two, it's, holy means to be set apart, two people coming together, totally committed to each other, only to each other, forsaking all other people, but they are only giving your body to this one person that you love, that you adore, that you've made this covenant with, that you've made this commitment, this lifelong commitment with. And that is a blessing for that. And this is a holy act between a husband and a wife to enjoy each other and have a blast together. But what's happened is, is that other people have distorted that. They have perverted that very thing that was set aside to be a blessing between a husband and a wife. And they've completely perverted this thing. And now what they've done is they've exploited it on videos that are, can get access through cell phones. And then other people, try to do what ha what happens between a husband and a wife who are adults and they try to do that with children and it's not designed for children it is designed for the husbands and the wives the mothers and the fathers it is not designed to for someone to have that kind of activity that kind of intimacy where two naked bodies are coming together that's not supposed to happen with a child and so this by the way is a healthy way to have that conversation so so have the conversation. I love what Gino did, but I'm also questioning you on if all we're doing is cursing sex by because we're cursing pornography, which again is a cursed thing, and, and we're cursing sex, uh, sex trafficking, which is a cursed thing, we have to make sure we paint the full picture. And so it is important to show them the path and show them how that someone leads. It's kind of like this. You could even use some of the nursery rhymes that you've had, right? Let's let's talk about one of them. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood, right? How, how here she kind of gets led away, led away, led away, and then bam, she's snatched. So use terms that make sense to the child. Do not do not think that not talking about it is going to protect your child. You've got to have the conversation. You got to have it consistently and let it be a two-way conversation or a three-way. Mom and dad and the child, ask them what they think about it. Ask them where they see that it's going on. Ask them what they've heard at school. Again, open, loving, not cursed. If you see this, and no, don't do that because you're going to clam your child up. But draw out of them what they think it is, what their idea of it is what they've heard about it, what they've seen about it, where they've seen it, who they've heard it from. And again, be careful. Be careful in how you present this because you could program them to be afraid of sex for even after they get married. You could be, you could program them to think it's all shameful versus showing them the balance that it is not shameful. It's beautiful as long as it's over here in this beautiful place of marriage. But over here, this is where it is hurtful. This is where people can get abducted. This is where people have been drugged. This is where people have been badly abused. This is where people have walked away with great shame that just even the enticement of the pornography, they feel guilty. They feel ashamed. They feel horrible. They feel bad. And in some cases, even drawn kids to, to hurt themselves and to hurt other people. And then in the hurting of themselves, they get drawn into other people who end up hurting them. And so anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you today. Please listen, tell me what you think. We want to know what you think, how you feel about today's entire show. And by the way, if you want to know how to have even more conversations that are really important to have with your kids about obedience and work, about saving money and, and being set apart and different than the masses, get a hold of the book, Grooming the Next Generation for Success. You can find it on our website, dannyjohnson.com. Again, that's grooming the next generation for success. You want to groom your children for success because I promise you, everybody outside of you is grooming their child for failure. 
accidentally. Not on purpose, but they're doing what everybody else is doing and you might be doing what everyone else is doing too. Find out now by getting your copy of Grooming the Next Generation for Success at dannyjohnson.com. Hey, please share this video. This kind of awareness needs to happen. People need to understand what to do with their kids and grandkids. God bless. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.